Good morning, guys and gals. Froggy here. I don't do a lot of uh, gun videos. Uh, there are a lot of guys that uh, know more about it than I do and uh, probably do the filming better. But anyway, I am just going to show you this uh, attachment of a sling to my new uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. Um, I may show you a couple little tips and tidbits uh, that I generally will come across. This is not staged, and uh, I didn't get paid by anybody to do this, but I will put some links down in the, um, in the comments uh, for these products if you want to go buy them off Amazon. So anyway, uh, to start with, uh, it's always a question... Uh, uh, is this stuff steel? Is this aluminum? Is this plastic? Whatever it is. You know, a lot of this gun is made out of, you know, people generically call it plastic. It's not really plastic. There's some scientific name for it. And uh, I will let you uh, smart guys post it down in the comments. But I've got a little magnet here. Okay. So barrel is magnetic. Fore grip is not. This, what I'm going to put on there, is magnetic. That's a really good little magnet. Um, trigger magnetic. This guard is not. Hand grip is not. The rear stock is not. Okay, so just showing you that. Um, so far as I can tell, this part is not magnetic. But the whole rest of it is. I think this is aluminum. I took my knife out and I scratched it a little bit. And I could see uh, shiny underneath the paint. Um, so I'm going to call this aluminum. Uh, if I'm wrong, somebody can correct me. Uh, on this sling, uh, I think this is aluminum here. Again, I scratched it. It was shiny underneath. That part is steel or... I shouldn't call it steel. Steel is a specific alloy, um, but it, whatever, ferros, if that's the right word, whatever metallic uh, element causes a magnet to be attracted, that's what that is. Uh, all these buckles of plastic, 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 and so on. Ooh, I don't like that. This is probably aluminum then. I wish that was steel. Uh, okay, there you go. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna mount this right about yay because this is a free floating barrel. I don't wanna put this way, way down on the end because then when I tighten up on the sling, I'm gonna use the sling, by the way, for shooting not so much for carrying. I've got a case to carry the gun with, and I'm not going to go hunting or um, carry it hiking or anything like that. Um, so this is to use the sling properly to steady yourself as an aid in shooting. And I'm going to put it here. These are probably too short. This one seems ideal. Uh, with a free floater barrel, I think if I, if I suck the sling up really tight it might cause this to bend a little bit and touch the barrel i don't know leverage you know what i mean so i'm going to go there and see how that works out for my accuracy when i'm shooting it freehand um oh by the way all this all this where'd my magnet go there it is all this is magnetic and they give you two Allen keys. Go figure. All right, so let me get started. As I said, I'm just making this up as I go along. I haven't watched anybody else do this video. I think this little cap here comes out. I can see four tabs. See, there's one there. So I'm going to try depressing those tabs and see if this cap will pop out. I would rather not take this whole thing off because that just gets into way too much work. Okay, so this is this is where Froggy gives you the little detailed techniques that nobody else does. Here's how I got it off. 
I took a couple of stubby screwdrivers and I reached in where you could see the tab there and I leaned it up against myself, kind of cradling it under my arm almost, but down on the bench. And I took the two stubbies and I, you, uh, so I have two hands, I'm leaning the gun against me, I don't have to hold it. Two hands, one on each side, and I push on those tabs until the top of this little circle tilts that way. So these two are disengaged, right? Then I carefully reach down, and I can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm doing it by feel. I use the two stubby screwdrivers to push these two tabs, one there, one on the other side. I press those two to disengage them, and then it slides off. Okay, there you go. I was having a little trouble with my focus. Um, obviously, this doesn't have to come all the way off. Just move it to the to the front. Now I'm going to try and reach in here, and I'll give you some little tricks and tips if I can. And uh, I think the way these are supposed to work is you put the, I'm going to call that a nut. It's not like a traditional nut. The nut and the screw on there, and then you shove it in. You carefully turn the nuts 90 degrees, and then you tighten up with the Allen. I'm gonna need two hands, so let's see if that's how it works. So you're gonna pre-assemble like that, okay? This part goes towards the threads, okay? Not like that. And then you're gonna have them lined up like that. You're gonna put it through the slot Turn these 90 degrees and then tighten up. Okay. Oh, by the way, these have some Loctite on it already. And uh, what else? Uh, I guess that's what I wanted to tell you. Okay, so far as how tight you put it, and remember it's got Loctite on it. I've got a 3 8 drive, um, cheap uh, torque wrench and adapters and stuff to get down to the right size of the Allen, which is, it's a 2.5 Allen, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it is, says 2.5 and 2.5 seems to fit. Anyway. I set this to the lowest possible setting, which is five foot pounds, and it still didn't click. It clicks when it gets there, so I didn't push it. I think if you guys and gals take the Allen that they provide it, and you put it in there, and you lay it down like that, and you go like that with your thumb and you've got a fairly strong hand and just go don't go so hard as you can but go really 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 snug i know that's not very scientific i tried i think that'll be good because of the loctite you don't want to strip it you could strip it um, these are steel and that is steel but you could still strip it and please don't put the wrong allen in there you will strip it um, a 2.0 will fit, but, you know. <laughs> uh, so, that is on there nice and tight. And by the way, I did not have to reach inside there and hold anything to hold the nut. The beautiful design of these is as you turn the Allen, as you turn the screw, the nut rotates and stops 90 degrees and just stays there so you can tighten it up. That is pretty cool. Um, trying to get some light on this thing uh so far as the quick disconnect goes remember i told you this is steel that's aluminum i think or this is some something magnetic um i told you i was going to try not to call it steel you press this button in and you shove it in there it's not a perfect down to the tenth of a millimeter fit press that in 
shove it, the button pops back out and it locks. It rotates 360 degrees. It's a little rough if you ask me, but you know, it's got four ball bearings in a race there. Um, you might put a little lube in there, uh, some lube that uh, will withstand some heat because you're gonna have heat from wherever you're shooting and you're gonna have heat from the barrel. So like brake, uh, like uh, on a car, you have uh, brake grease that withstands high temperatures. And there's probably some special grease for firearms also. So grease it a little bit. Let me show you how it comes out. Press that way in, wiggle a little bit and it comes out. I think it might break in a little bit and I also think the grease will help. Uh, so there's your front. On the back, I told you I'm going to use this for now. You can also run a sling through here, and you can also put some attachment points here. Um, but that's, you know, if you put it here to here, that's more for carrying it around. You see the guy's now carrying it around with it on a 45-degree angle, and the, you know, the, the hand... The hand grip is down around your belly area, maybe a little bit lower. Lower. I don't want that. I just wanted to use it for a, uh, a shooting aid. Um, so I don't think I'm going to put anything there. Um, I might go there or I might go there. Well, let's put the sling on. I'm going to use this uh, disc brake lube. It goes up to 2800F, so I don't think it'll get that hot. Okay, I just put a little on a Q-tip like that. Put a little inside there, put a little around here. I guess you could also drip a little bit down this hole to get into where that spring is. But, you know, that, that really seems pretty okay to me, so I'm not going to do that myself. It might attract dust or dirt. Um, but that's your lube. There. Uh, just a little, my own personal quirk, I guess. I want the name facing that way so i'm going to take this clip off i want to be able to clip this in let's see might be okay the way it is yeah that's really okay i don't have to reverse it i was going to take it off and reverse it but i don't really have to yeah, actually i did reverse it so that i can clip it down if this is laying on my shooting bench i can just Clip it on and off like that, facing the opening facing down, instead of having to go like that. So, you know, that's easy. Just undo the strap, rotate that 180 degrees, put the strap back in. Now, for the back, and this is kind of a short sling maybe, so there's a lot of adjustments on it. You always want to have double, um, whatever you, you call these, uh, clasps. Uh, if you just had one, it might slide and you lose your adjustment. So double that up. If you wanted to make it shorter, you can run these up here and you gain a couple inches there. Um, on the back, I could, I suppose, just use this clip. But see, it's going to be facing the wrong way. It, it would end up being you know, like that. I don't know. Sorry, a little out of frame. Uh, that might not be so bad, but I can just take this piece of hardware off and run the strap through there. I'm going to try that. Okay, there. So that's about it. Um, just you can adjust it on that end or that end, whatever you want to. I like to keep this little tail short as possible. Um, so it doesn't flop around and um, also I'm going to move this buckle I guess I'll call it a buckle up a little more so it's tighter on that piece of hardware the way this one is back here um, so then you so you fit it to your um, body size and your arm length I'm not going to go through that that's a whole other video this is just to show you how to at attach um, the M lock and the sling uh, with some uh what what do you call this type of an attachment so one of you guys and gals uh, put that down in the comments for me will you uh 
Okay, so give me a thumbs up or a like if this helps you out. Subscribe to my channel if you want more from Froggy. Uh, uh, give me, uh, uh, click, on the, click on the bell if you want notifications. Okay, Froggy out. Bye-bye. Oops, I forgot to show you how to put this back. But you just shove it down there. You line up where the little tabs are supposed to go and just shove it in. Okay? So, as, as it turns out, before somebody puts it down in the comments, you don't even have to remove this little circular piece on the end here to put these on. Uh, Froggy leaves the bloopers in. <laughs> so, there's one last uh, beauty shot. I, I set the sling up to my size, uh, and, of course... The rear stock adjusts so yeah, I'm pretty happy with it see ya